today we're going to be talking about using blending modes. And there's a ton of different blending modes in On1 Photo Raw. There's 24 to be exact. And there's a lot of math that goes into using and um, understanding blending modes in general. But for today, we're going to go over sort of the basics. And we're just going to cover five of the most basic ones that you're going to use probably most of the time you're using blend modes. So with that said, I'm going to pull over this little sheet I've made of the different blend modes. So we're going to start out just talking about the basic of blend modes and what blend modes do. So at the basic point of blend modes, they determine how two layers are blended together. So if you have two layers on top of each other, your blending modes are going to determine what that looks like when they're blended together. So if we go over these different blend modes over here, they come up in different categories. And the first category for these blend modes is your darken modes. Now all of these modes here from darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color, those are all going to darken your image. So whenever you have two layers on top of each other and you use one of these darkening modes, it's going to darken that final photo. Below that we have our lighten modes. So we have lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and then lighter color. So these are just going to lighten your photo. If you have two layers on top of it, or if you have a layer on top of a photo and you choose this lighten mode, let's say for example screen, it's going to brighten that image up. And then we have our contrast modes. So our contrast modes are going to add in contrast to the photo. One of the most popular ones is this overlay, but we also have all of these different ones, soft light, hard light, and they create contrast within your photo. Below that we have comparative modes, and then we have composite modes, which are used whenever you're trying to pinpoint a specific luminous value or just pinpoint your colors on your photo. So we're going to talk about the five most used ones. And for those five, I chose multiply, screen, overlay, color, and then luminosity. Multiply is probably one of the most common used blending modes. And multiply darkens your image. And there's a lot of math that goes into all of these blend modes. But I don't want to get into too much of that in this webinar. I just want to talk about the basics of what they do so you can get a better understanding. So when you go back into the editing room, you can apply them to your photos and see what they look like. But this multiply blend mode, it basically combines the contrast and the luminosity of the top and bottom layer together, which darkens the image. So the basic math behind how this blend mode works is that the dark pixels of the background layer, that bottom layer, are multiplied with those of the foreground layer and then combined which results in a darkening of that photo. So let's go into Photo Raw here. And we'll start with this shot here. And I'm just going to go into my edit module. OK. So to explain how the multiply blend mode works, I'm going to add a layer. OK. So now if I make this a little bit bigger, And you'll see that I have my white over here, I have my middle section which is gray, and I have my black over here. Well, if I head over to my layers, I can access my blending modes by going into this little gear icon here. And you can also access your blending modes within your effects and your local adjustments by clicking on that gear option as well. So for this blend mode, we want to modify this layer here. So I'm just going to click on this gear icon, and now watch as I click on multiply you'll see that it's blending these two layers together. And when I have a little bit of gray, and it's less opacity than this complete black, then it's darkening my photo. So I move this around. You'll see that with complete white, it's not doing anything. But with gray at about 50%, it's darkening my photo up. Well, one thing I like to do with the multiply blend mode is I like to use it to darken up bright pixels in my photo, you can kind of use it as a polarizer, and you can also just brush it on with different filters and local adjustments to kind of remove highlight, highlighted areas in your photograph. So I'm just going to delete this layer, and I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to add a new local adjustment layer, I'm going to make sure it's set to darken, and then I'm going to head up here, and I'm going to go into my masking options, and I'm going to invert that mask. So you'll see that now I have this local adjustment layer. And it's set to darken. So I have 
negative one on the exposure and it's darkening up my photo. Well, if I go up to my blending modes here and I change my mode to multiply, you'll see it gets even darker. So look how dark that's getting on my photograph now. And that's just by clicking on that multiply dark or that multiply blend mode to darken up the photograph. So what I like to do with these is I'll reset this adjustment. I set it to darken. And I actually just brush this out around my truck here. So I'm just going to brush this out from around my truck. Oops. Let's increase the opacity a little bit. So I'm just going to brush this out from my truck here. And I want to create sort of a vignette and clean up some of these darker areas in my sky. So now I can just go over and we'll actually brush a little bit more of that back in. And now I'll just go over to my local adjustment here. And if I go into my mode and I go up to multiply, you'll see it kind of acts as a polarizer and removes a lot of these highlighted areas, but also darkens this area around my truck. So now I can go over to that adjustment and I can lower the opacity to make it natural. And then I can just paint a little more out from my truck area. And just kind of blend it. And now if I turn this local adjustment off and on, does an awesome job of really removing of those highlighted areas around my truck while using that multiply blend mode. But I also like to use it with portraits if there's blown out areas behind my model or if there's highlighted areas around um, a subject, I like to use it for that as well. So let's switch photos real quick. I'll click this photo. Okay, so you see this area around her hair right here that's a little bit too bright. I want to kind of tone this area down around my subject here. So I'm actually going to go and I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to add a filter. And I'm going to add a textures filter. And I'm going to go into my categories and I've brought in just a nice black solid. So you'll see that I've put on this just black solid background on my photograph. But if you add a texture, there's different blending modes that are being used for that, uh, that texture. Well, I'm just going to pull up the opacity on this so it's at 100. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to change this to normal. And now that looks like, oops, not normal. So if I turn this off and on, you'll see it's just kind of darkening this area around our subject here. But if we go into our blend modes and we go to our mode, and we choose multiply, it darkens it even more around our subject around here so that we can go in and I'll just brush this off lightly. Oops. I'll just brush this off lightly from where I don't want it. And now if I turn this off and on, It does an awesome job of really darkening those areas around my subject. So basically the multiply blend mode just darkens your image if you put a layer on top of it. So if you're blending two layers together and you use multiply, it's going to darken that photo. But if you have complete black, if you have a 100% black layer on your photo, it's not going to do anything. And if you have a complete white layer, it's not going to do anything as well. So I'll just go in and I'm just going to brush a little bit more of this out. But you see it does an awesome job of you know, pulling in some of those highlighted areas and allowing them to not be so blown out on the photo. Another great thing that you can use it for is applying textures. And not just textures as far as solids goes like we did with this photo, but if you want to go in and actually apply a texture to a bright photo, it looks really nice if you use multiply. So we'll go into this shot here. And it's a, it's a pretty bright shot. I mean, this is an incredibly bright photo, and this is the original shot, so there's nothing actually applied to it. 
So if I go into effects and I add a filter, I'll add the textures filter and I'll just click on this postcard one. So I'm going to go down to my opacity, I'll put it at 100. And then I'm actually going to go to my blend mode here and I'm just going to put it on replace. So now I have this entire postcard texture here being applied to my photo. So if I go over to my textures filter and I go into my blend modes and we'll click on multiply, it'll blend it with the photo, but it'll darken it. So if I turn this off and on, you'll see it's darkened this photo. It's brought a lot of those highlighted areas back into view by putting this one texture on top of it. So now I can go in and if I pull back on the opacity, I can make it a little bit more natural. But you'll see that even if I pull back on the opacity down to zero and I turn this texture off, it's still darkening my photo in here. So anytime you're applying something with this multiply mode, it's going to darken your photo. All right, so let's move back over to, here we go, okay. So the next blending mode that I wanna talk about is the screen blend mode. And screening is another super popular blend mode. Okay, and with the screen blend mode, the values of the pixels in the last two layers are inverted, multiplied, and then inverted again. This yields the opposite effect to multiply, which results in a brighter photo. Which I know there's a lot going on in that, and. Blend modes can be very confusing because there's a lot of math and things that go into them. But if you just think about the basics of what it does, lightens a photo, it's a lot easier to understand. So let's go into a shot here and I'll show you a couple good ways that you can use it. Okay, so I have this waterfall photo here and it's a pretty dark waterfall photo. Well, to demonstrate how the screen blend mode works, I'm just gonna go up to my layers here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate my waterfall layer. So now I have two of the same exact photos. So I have two of these layers here. Well, with this top layer, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna click on my gear options to pull up my blending mode. And I'll scroll down and I'll select screen. And you'll see that if I turn this layer off and on, it brightens up the photo a ton. So whenever you apply that screen blend mode, it's going to brighten those areas. It's emulating if you took two photographs and you put a bright projector through them, those two photographs would be a lot brighter with the light shining through them. So it's trying to emulate that with the screen blend mode. But you'll see in here that after adding that screen blending mode, all my water lost all of you know, the nice detail and the smooth runniness of it. So what I can do is I can go to this top layer here, I'll click on my masking options, and I'll click on luminosity to create a luminosity mask. So if I view this, this is creating a mask based off the brighter areas of my photo and applying it to the water. So if I reset this mask, oops, whoops, if I click luminosity and I invert this mask, now it's only being applied to the area around my water and not the actual water itself. So if I go back to this photo and I turn this off and on, it hasn't affected too much of the water in here. And to brighten this photo up, all I used was a screen blend mode. So a really powerful tool just for brightening up the areas in your photograph. And let's say on this shot, I grabbed a local adjustment layer. And we just brightened it up maybe just a little bit with exposure. And I painted this in here. this one, sorry, the bottom layer, if we br brushed in a little bit of a local adjustment. There we go. And then I went to my blending modes and I chose screen. You'll see that it brightens those up instantly. So anytime you use screen, you're gonna be brightening that, brightening that area that you're modifying, brightening the image with the two layers that are being blended. So just keep in mind that screen is going to brighten your photos, multiply is going to darken your images.
So a cool way to use screen, rather than just brightening areas in your photo, is to use it on filters and effects. And I actually did a YouTube video on this a couple weeks ago, but it's a really cool way to use the screen blending mode, and it kind of gives you a good idea of what it does. So, Oh, whoops, I had two layers on there and it's saving them, so. Sorry guys. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So now, for this particular photo, if I zoom in here, and I zoom on this area in my photograph, there's a little bit of blown out, kind of white, harsh edges on the sun. Well, if I go to my Develop tab, and I even pull up on the exposure, it's going to make it even worse. So if I want to pull back on this, to bring back some of the detail in the sky here. But now that I've done that, if I zoom in, I have this kind of blotchy area of sun. Well, what I can do to fix that is I can go into effects, I'll add a filter, I'll add a blur filter. Obviously, I don't want that applied to the entire shot, so we'll go into our masking options. I'm going to invert this mask. I'll make it about kind of the size of it, make the opacity 100. And then if I just brush this on right here, It'll blur that little area right there. But now if I go to that blur and I go into my masking options and I choose a blend mode and I change my blend mode to screen, watch how it brightens up. So now that it's at screen rather than normal, so if I go from normal to screen, there's normal, there's screen, you'll see it really brightens up that area. But now if I zoom out and zoom in, and turn this off and on, there's not that harsh edge around this blown out sun area, and it looks a lot more natural in my photograph. <coughs> so that's a great way to use screen. Keep in mind that using screen is going to brighten your images, and multiply is going to darken your images. So let's move on here to our next blend mode, which is overlay. And overlay is an awesome use of um, your blend mode. When using the overlay blend mode, anything darker than 50% gray will darken and add contrast to the underlying image. And anything brighter than 50% gray will brighten and add contrast to the underlying image. So if you have a pretty dark layer on top of another layer, it's going to darken and then add contrast. But if you have a brighter layer, it's going to brighten the photo, but it's also going to add contrast. So an easy way to show you how to do that is we'll just do this right away. And just think about the overlay blend mode as adding in contrast. It'll, it's so much easier if you just think about it like that, rather than thinking about the math that goes into it. So for example, if we have this photo here, right here, and let's say we wanted to add a little bit more contrast onto it. Well, if I go up to my Layers pane here, and I add a layer. OK, so now if I make this large, and I go over to my Layers pane, and I click on my gear icon, and I go down to Overlay. So now watch as I move this around my photograph. You'll see that with the white, even though it's brighter than what it's putting onto, it's brightening that area on my photograph, but it's also adding in more contrast. Whereas this black, where it's 100% black, is adding in contrast and darkening my photo. So with the gray, nothing's being applied. But if it's less than 50 or more than 50, then we have contrast being applied to our photograph. So we'll delete this layer. And now if I add a filter, I'll go into textures, and I'll just add that postcard layer again. And I'll go up the opacity to about 100. So now if I head over to my gear icon here in my textures pane, and I go into my blending modes, I'm going to select overlay. And just watch how it adds contrast to my photo. So now if I turn this off and on, you'll see that it's darkened up my photograph in here. And it's also added in a lot of contrast into these areas on my building. 
Whereas if I went to mode and I went to screen, it's going to brighten up my photograph. And if I went to my blending mode and I went up to multiply, that's going to darken my photograph. So multiply darkens, screen will lighten or brighten the photograph, and your overlay will add in contrast. So let's click out of this and I'll show you another overlay example. And it's just a really awesome way to add in contrast to your photo when you're blending two different layers. So I'm actually going to click out of this. I think I was modifying it already. Okay, so we'll add a filter. We'll add texture. I'm actually going to go into my categories and I'm going to grab that solid black like I did before. And I'm going to go to replace and the opacity at 100. So now if I go up to my blending modes here and I go into my modes and I choose overlay and I turn this off and on, you'll see it's darkening my image and it's also adding in contrast into the areas on my photograph. Whereas if I went to mode and I went to screen, it'll brighten it. Multiply will darken. I mean, so it has to be less than opacity to actually work in the multiply mode, but you're kind of getting the point. So if we close out of this and we go to this photo, one of my favorite things to use this blending mode on is to fix older vintage photos and add in contrast to them. So I'm sure a ton of people have these old photos, you know, nice flash photos where there's just a little bit of uh, areas where there's not as much contrast as you'd like. Well, an easy way to fix that is to use your overlay blend mode. So if I go in here and I add this filter, I'll add textures again. I'll add that solid black. We're going to replace that and bring it to 100% so we have this black layer on top of our image. So now if I go to my textures filter and I go into my blend modes and I go into my mode and I choose overlay, you'll see it adds in a ton of contrast. And now we can just go up to the opacity and we can just lower it to make it look more natural. But if I turn this off and on now, it's done an awesome job of bringing in contrast and really bringing in a lot more detail into this pretty flat vintage shot. So overlay blend mode is an awesome way to bring in contrast to a relatively flat photo. All right, so let's move on here. And we're going to move on to color. So the color blend mode is another really popular blend mode, and it basically blends only the color. So the color blending mode preserves the luminosity of the base layer while adopting the hue and saturation of the blend layer. So for this particular blend mode, let's go back to Photo Raw, and I'll grab this photo here of these nice colors. So if I go in and I add a filter, I add a curves, We'll just play with this curves filter here real quick. We'll just make a nice kind of janky S curve, which is pretty strong, which is not a big deal. But if I turn this off and on, <coughs> excuse me, if I turn this curves filter off and on, you'll see it's being applied to the entire photo. Well, if I only wanted to apply to the areas with color, I can use a blend mode to do that. So if I go back into my curves pane or my curves filter and I choose this gear icon, We'll go down to our mode, and we'll choose color. So now watch as I turn this off and on. It's only applying this curves filter to the colored areas on my photograph, and it's leaving the white areas alone. So this is an awesome way if you want to specifically target colors in your photo by using different adjustments and filters. So for example, if I Let's say I add a texture onto this photo with some words or something. We'll add a filter, I'll add a texture, and we'll just use one of these words right here. We'll use dark text three. So now if I go down into my textures and I go to my gear icon and I go to my blend mode and I choose color, now if I turn this off and on, 
you'll see it's blending this texture onto the colored layers because I've chose that blending mode as color. So now it's only being applied to the hue and saturation of that bottom layer. It's also an awesome way to incorporate nice bright colors into your photo without actually modifying your shadow or luminosity values. So if I go in here and I add a filter, we'll just add curves. And inside my curves here, I'm just going to make a simple S curve. So I'm just going to pull down on my shadows and then I'll pull up on my highlights. Now if I turn this off and on, I really like all the colors that it incorporates into my photograph and I like what it does to the mountain here, but it's creating a lot of contrast around my city and I can't really see the foreground very well. Well, if I only want this applied to the colored areas on my photo, I can head over to my curves and I can click on this gear icon. I'll go into blend modes and now if I choose color and I turn this off and on, it's a little bit subtle, but if you zoom into the mountain, you can really kind of see what it does. If I turn this off and on, it's strictly applying this curve to all of the colored areas on my photograph, and it's not being applied to the entire photo. So it's specifically targeting the colors and the hue and the saturation of my photograph with this blending mode so that it's not applied to the entire photo. It also works well if you're trying to increase color on portraits because you can modify a portrait by using different adjustments and tone curves and things like that. But if you just want to target the specific areas of color on your photograph, you can use a blending mode to do that. So for this portrait, let's say I want to increase the color a bit. Well, if I go over to my filters and I add a curve and I play with the curve a little bit just to bring in a little bit more color and pop. So I really like the colors that that's bringing out. I like how it's made her lips a little bit more red. It's kind of brought out the color in her makeup here. But if I turn this off and on, it's added in too much contrast again. So we'll go over to our curves filter and in our gear options, we'll choose our blend mode. And again, we'll choose color. So now watch as I turn this off and on. It's strictly applying that tone curve to the hue and saturation areas on my photograph and it's not being applied to any of the luminance values. So the overall tonality of this photo isn't being modified, it's just modifying the curves within those colors. We'll do another example here. Okay, so for this particular photo, if we add a filter, we'll add another curves filter. And if we play with this tone curve a little bit, you see that that's really bringing out all of those blues in the photo. And I really like all those blues, but if you zoom in here, it's kind of crunching up this area on this building and making this really dark over here. And I just don't like all of that contrast. Well, if I zoom in under the flag here and I go over to this curves, we'll click on the gear icon and we'll go into our blend mode again. Now, if I head up, and I choose color and I turn this off and on, you'll see it's just strictly pulling out the tone curve for those colors on my photo. And it's blending them together appropriately. Whereas if I didn't have this on and it was on normal, it's applying this tone curve the, to the entire image and it's not being applied strictly to the color. Well, another way that you can modify specific tones in your photo rather than applying an adjustment to specific colors is to use a different blending mode, which is the luminosity blend mode. <clears throat> so let's go out of here real quick and we'll go back into a little blend mode sheet. And the luminosity blend mode blends only the brightness of the two layers. So it's only affecting the layer and pixels below based on the brightness levels. So it's basically changing the brightness levels on the layer below to even those tones out. So kind of an easy way to look at that is, so if we look at this photo here, let's say we want to go in and we want to add sort of a nice stylistic tone curve 
but we don't want all of the saturation that comes with that. Well, let's add a curve here. And I'll pull this down to kind of bring some style. Kind of make it dramatic just so you guys can see. But like that, we have a nice dramatic tone curve now. <clears throat> but it's making the colors a bit too dark and kind of muffled up over here, especially in this flag here. It's really kind of orange and red. So what I can do is if I just want that strictly applied to the luminosity, which is just the tonality of the photo without the colors, then I can head over to this tone curve and in my gear options here, I'm going to choose a mode and I'm just going to select luminosity. So now watch as I turn this curves filter off and on and I zoom in up here. You'll see that the colors aren't being muddied up at all, but it's still applying that nice kind of clean and sleek tone curve. So now watch as I go into my mode and I click color. Now it's only applied to that color and it's bringing out all of the colors in that photo with that tone curve. Whereas the luminosity is only being applied to the luminance values in my photo and it's not modifying the colors at all. This might be a better example for that. So if we take a look at this photograph here, there's nothing being applied to it. It's just a raw photo. But let's say we want to kind of tone down this haze over here near our mountains and make these people pop out a little bit more. But because this photo is incredibly blue, we don't want all of those blue tones to get muddied up either. Well, if I add a filter and I add a tone curve, I'm just going to pull this down to kind of do the same thing we were doing earlier. So like that. I really like how the tones work in this photo. I mean, I love how it's pulling out all the haze and we can really see all of the deta details in that mountain. But I don't like what it's doing with the color. So what I can do is I'll head over to my curves, I'll go into my gear icon, and I only want this applied to the luminosity or the brightness of my photo. So I'll go into my mode and I'll just click luminosity. So now if I turn this tone curve off and on, I mean, it brings the colors down a little bit, but watch as I click that back to normal. <clears throat> it really accentuates all those blue, and we have a ton of blue color cast on our photo. Whereas if I went down to my modes and I choose luminosity, it's keeping those colors quite intact, and we're still getting that nice effect we were looking for with our tone curve. But let's say we wanted to modify the color a little bit, so if we go in here and we go to curves, but now if we only wanted this applied to the color, we could click on our curves, our mode, and then if we click color, it's strictly applying this to the color on our photo and it's not applying it to the actual luminance or tonality of our shot. The luminosity blend mode and the color blend mode are actually polar opposites of each other. Whereas the luminosity mode, you're dealing with the tonality, the luminance in your photo, and you're not dealing with the color values at all. The color blend mode, you're dealing strictly with the color and the RGB values on that base layer when it's blended. So we'll move on here. And this is a good example also when using luminosity to protect color. So you can use it with portraits as well. So if I add a filter here, and I kind of want to add just another stylistic you know, filter or, shot or uh, effect to this photo, well, I'll just go into my curves again, and I'll just, again, just kind of add a little bit of style, a little bit more contrast. Maybe we'll pull up on the midtones, maybe less. So now if I go in, and I look at her face here, and I turn this off and on, there's a lot of harsh colors in here. Well, if I go over to my curves, and I go into my blending modes, if I only want this tone curve applied to the luminance values or the tonality of my photo, basically, essentially the brightness and darkness, then I can go into the modes here, and I'll just cl click luminosity. And now if I turn this off and on, it's not bringing out any of those colors or oversaturating anything, it's strictly applying this tone curve to the luminance values or the tonality in my photo. <clears throat>
Whereas if I clicked into this curve and we'll add a filter and I brought this down to bring in maybe more color on her. So now if I click on my curves icon and I click on my blending mode and we'll choose color. Now if I turn this off and on, that tone curve is strictly applied to the color on this photograph and it's not actually being applied to the luminance values. The color blend mode applies it strictly to the hue and saturation of that base layer, whereas your luminosity blend mode applies it strictly to the brightness of the photo.